as the Golden Eagles prepare to take on sideline cancer tonight in the $1 million winner-take-all championship of the basketball tournament. We go to the phone lines now where we are joined by the host of Inside TBT, a former Ohio State Buckeye. He was he was the towel guy, and we'll talk to him about that a little bit as well. Uh, it is Mr. Joey Lane joining us here on the Alex Strofe Show. Joey, how, how is everything, my friend? Happy Championship Tuesday to you. Oh, man, it, it feels like Christmas Day a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> we've been so spoiled with some great basketball after having no sports for what felt like a lifetime. So uh, I'm doing great. Couldn't be doing much better. Well, Joey, really appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, to chat with us about the basketball tournament. And that's going to be my first question for you. Obviously, with this no sports aura going on the last few months, uh, TBT has not only had the opportunity but capitalized uh, on the opportunity to gain a lot of attention and viewership over the last uh, two weeks. What have you taken away from this, uh, th- this, this particular basketball tournament? I'll tell you what, first and foremost, and you mentioned it, the, the world, the climate we're in right now, the fact that the TBT staff, Dan Friel, John Mugar, and the rest of the crew was able to make this happen, frankly, is what has been so impressive to me. And, and I mean, you see it, they had their problems initially. Obviously, they got fixed, and they ended up having what turned out to be an incredible tournament that's obviously not over. Um, but, I mean, just they had so many expectations to live up to because they were the first sporting event that people would be watching on TV and not right. only on TV, on ESPN. So, <laughs> um, you know, it was pretty amazing and remarkable that it went just as swimmingly as it did. And obviously I'm super, super happy about it. And Joey, you've been involved with, with both this one and last year's, correct? So what, what's the big difference outside of the, the obvious, uh, you're not there, but how different has this been in comparison to last year's tournament? Just no gimme games, no blowouts. I mean, yes, there are blowouts because it's still basketball, but no, no gimme games, no games where you know what team's going to win. And that's not a knock at the, um, you know, the other forty or so teams that are um, typically in the basketball tournament. But I mean, the fact that we saw in the first round, I'm going to talk about my Buckeyes. You know, the fact that we saw Carmen's Crew versus the House of Pain team, those might have been. They could have been two of the best teams in the tournament playing in Carmen's Crew's first game. You know, so. It, that, that just furthers my point that, you know, every single team had a chance to win the tournament, which that doesn't happen if there's 64 teams. So, um, you know, it's just it's the main difference. Obviously, smaller field and there's no fans and there's some crazy differences. But the basketball, the pure basketball difference is that there's just no gimme games. Joey Lane, the co-host of Inside TBT Podcast and an Ohio State basketball alum, is my guest at this time. And, Joey, you brought up your uh, – your Ohio State Carmen's crew team. Uh, and that was not the way we wanted to see Aaron Kraft's professional basketball career end. Obviously, the one seed going down early. Uh, what would you see? What would you hear from Aaron after his last professional game? Yeah, you know, I've uh, gone on record a few times saying that there's no way he retires. And retire is a loose term to me. Will he go back overseas and play in Italy again? I don't think so. I think he will go on to be a doctor and probably end up being one of the best doctors ever because that's the only way he does things. (laughs) But in terms of playing basketball on a a stage with other professionals on TV, playing for money, a.k.a. the TBT, he'll he'll be playing in it next year. There's no doubt in my mind. How can he say no to getting on the court, repping the Scarlet and Gray again with his former teammates, even if he's not in, you know, 100% Aaron Kraft shape, he'll figure out a way to be you know, 80% and his 80% is better than a lot of people's a hundred percent. So what's it going to take to get you uh, at least on the bench of Carmen's crew in the future? Is that ever even a possibility? Because I need you, I need you at least on the bench, man. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I'm, I'm very far in line in terms of guys that they would like to have. (laughs) I think that, I think that Mark Titus might fit the mold a little bit better because he played with a lot of those guys. I didn't play with any of these guys. Right. Uh, so he probably fits the mold, and he's probably a little bit more frustrated that he hasn't gotten a call versus me. Um, who knows, though? You might see me next year on the team. I, I'm, I'm thinking about lacing it up again, and it gives me a good excuse to get back into shape. So 
Um, we shall see. That's what I like to hear. All right, let's dive into tonight's game, Joey. Uh, sideline cancer, I mentioned it a little bit ago. They were the 22 seed in this tournament, and now they're in the Tuesday night championship. Uh, they have been unbelievable, it, it seems, so far, Joey. They just don't go away. Break them down for me ahead of tonight's game. Yeah, uh, like I said before, the fact that, you know, the field was so small, no bad team, seeding becomes almost irrelevant. You know, the 22 seed, if they broke it down NCAA tournament style, they would probably were like a four seed, you know? So right. um, is it that crazy that they won four games, they won three games, whatever it's been? Probably not. Um, but that all being said, obviously no one expected them to be there. Um, not in the same way the Golden Eagles, you know? So um, I think when you look at sideline cancer, obviously it starts with Marcus Keene. The dude's incredible. I think he – absolutely has earned himself an opportunity to prove that he can play at the highest level being the NBA. Um, I think that they are way more than just Marcus Keene. I think Mo Creek, Remy Abel, Eric Thompson, a lot, all those guys. I mean, they, they've all played a huge role in getting them this far. You don't get, you don't get to the, to the finals with TBT on the shoulders of, of a five, nine point guard, you know? So, right. um, I mean, that's, that's literally what they did, but you get what I'm saying. They, they, they needed help from other guys. Um, so, I mean, you even think about the fact that Diamond Stone had 19 points in their first game, but hurt his foot and had to play the rest of the time. If they had him, they'd be even deeper and even better. So, um, all that to say is that they're not here by accident. They, they are a great group. Um, a great, they're, they're, Seth Greenberg calls them a program, like other teams in TBT. They're a program. They played seven years, um, in the TBT. So they know, they know what they're doing. And, uh, they, they upset a bunch of teams last year as well. So, yeah. Um, it's no accident that they're there, uh, and it's been, uh, it's been pretty cool to see a team that's playing for a cause go this far. And, and obviously we're based out of Wisconsin, so I'm going to ask you a little bit more more about the uh, the Golden Eagles. Of course. I mean, obviously this team's kind of been, I don't know if I'd call them a dynasty quite yet, but they've always been one of the top dogs in this tournament. Again, back in the championship game tonight, a little bit different of a look than past years, but they uh, look just as fresh and sharp. Break those guys down for me ahead of the night. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, with the Golden Eagles, it starts and ends with a three-point line. You know, um, you could talk about DJL, you could talk about um, Dwight Bikes and, and the rest of their guards, but to me, I mean, Jamil Wilson is the most underrated player in the entire tournament. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's got something like seven career Elam ending winners, and he, is, and he 100% leads TBT history in three-pointers made. Um, so... When we're talking about the three-point line, you could typically you're going to talk about guards, but to me, he Jamil Wilson is just the unsung hero. Where every time he shoots it, I think it's going in. Um, but in terms of how they win the championship tonight, is, is number one, they've got to make three. I think that both of the both the teams shoot such a high percentage of their shot from behind the arc that you know if the Golden Eagles stay on their you know path and on the roll that they're not shooting the basketball, I think that they'll be really really hard to beat. Um, I also think that. They're much deeper. Uh, so, um, you know, they've got to use that to their advantage, whether that's, um, you know, subbing guys in frequently or playing pressure defense or running up and down the court as much as they can, you know, just use it to their advantage because, as I said before, without Diamond Stone, they uh, sideline cancer becomes a little bit thinner just in general with their, with their roster. So um, I just – I'm really excited for this game because I think Golden Eagles, on paper, they're way more well-known by, by the TBT world and, and everything. I think on paper, they're probably a better team, but sideline cancer hasn't been the better team on paper on paper in any of their games. So they're just fine with that. Yeah, they, they appreciate that underdog factor. I'm not going to ask you your prediction quite yet. I will, I will later, but not yet. I want to ask you about Travis Diener. You probably heard me talking about him uh, just a little bit before we brought you on, but it seems he's kind of become the golden child of TBT, at least this year. Uh, what, what does he mean to this tournament and its success? Yeah, you know, uh, funny enough, we had Travis on last night on our podcast uh, and got to speak with him a little bit, which was very fun the night before the game and stuff. But he, uh, you know, he's an awesome guy, first and foremost, and that's why people love him, obviously. Like, you can be the greatest basketball player in the world, but if you're not a nice dude, um, some people aren't going to root for you. But he happens to have both going for him, um, you know. So I just think that there's something to be said about the guys in the TBT um, that, number one, don't look like they – necessarily belong on the court whether that's because they're old or they're out of shape or they're balding or whatever um there's something to be said about that crop of guys that the <laughs> always has 
But then also, um, you know, when you're a fan favorite in college, you're going to be a fan favorite for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. So um, I just think that, that he exudes that energy that people just, you know, enjoy to watch him and he's hard to not root for. Um, and I mean, it also helps that, um, you know, he made a gigantic shot last year and he was on the TBT highlight, you know, real this entire year and he will be forever probably because of that shot. So, um, you know, it's just, Obviously, the old guy out there getting buckets is something that everyone loves to see. So um, I think that's why people love him so much. Yeah, we had him on on the show last month, and he was still debating whether or not he was going to participate. And then that video dropped last night by TBT, uh, pretty much saying Joe Chapman just signed him up with, without asking. And he'd be, uh, what did he say? <laughs> I'd be a prick if I backed out, which was absolutely right. hilarious. Exactly. And he thought out about that. <laughs> Joey Lane is my guest. He is the co-host of the Inside TBT podcast. And Joey, uh, tell me about how this works for you. Obviously, you're not there uh, this year versus obviously the last year where you were. So uh, what's it been like doing these press conferences over Zoom, doing these interviews either over the phone or over Zoom? How's it been for you, obviously, in this COVID-19 life? You know, it is funny because they told us, like, hey, you guys can come and quarantine. Um be our guest you just got to come you know a week early or whatever like everyone else and yeah we kind of were like uh would we be able to do anything differently in person versus over zoom and they said uh no not really and then we said well we uh you know this this tv inside tvt is not my full-time job so right. um it would have been a little hard to to dedicate my life to quarantining um in the tvt and stuff so it was a perfect storm honestly the fact that we were able to do it over zoom Granted, I am in Columbus. I'm down the street from where they're staying, which is kind of funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the Zoom element has made it so great for us because we can just pump out so much content. Um, like, in the weeks leading up to the tournament, we interviewed someone from almost all the 24 teams oh, wow. within, the, within three weeks. So, um, I mean, that wouldn't have been possible if, uh, you know, if we were trying to do them in person, obviously, but since we were doing them over video, um, we were able to just about interview whoever, you know, would respond to our text. So um, uh, that kind of made it great. And then the fact that the press conference, we're able to get nuggets that we could release right away um, afterwards has, has just made it really, really easy, especially for my co-host, Andrew, who does all the editing. And he's, he's the producer. He's the, he's the brain behind the operation. Um, it makes it pretty easy for him because uh, he's got, he's on his computer. It's all on his computer. He's recording. And then he can just, you know, click his couple buttons and send it out to the world within minutes after. Whereas, you know, if we're in person, we got our mics and our headset and we're in a different recording device. And I mean, obviously, you know, the drill. So right. um, it's kind of simplified everything, even though, you know, the, the being in person takes every interview to another level. But the element of Zoom and FaceTiming and being able to see their faces has, has made it pretty easy. Honestly, it's been Way better than I anticipated, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I want to ask again about about those press conferences, because if I'm not mistaken, it, it's just you and uh, your co-host, Andrew, right? It's just you two and then the two players and the coach after after every game. Is that is that correct? Yeah, so basically what happens is um, Jake Pavarski over at TBT will send us a text and say, hey, who do you guys, who do you guys think um, should do media after? And we'll say, you know, DJO and Dwight Bikes. And he goes, great, I agree. So he grabs those guys, grabs coach, they bring them in, and the Marquette media will ask them a bunch of questions. And then once they're done asking those questions over Zoom, um, we'll pop into the, to the Zoom lobby, um, and, uh, and then we, they're, we're projected on like a TV for them to see us and hear us, and we take about five minutes of their time to ask them some goofy questions. Um, and, and keep the mood light. So that's kind of uh, Great stuff. our job is to not necessarily ask them, you know, what the defensive uh, concepts were going in the game. It was more of who's the best uh, Monopoly player on the team. No, there you so, go. Uh, yeah, so that's kind, of, that's kind of where we come in right at the end. I like it. I, I like it a lot. Uh, so between you and Andrew then, I got to ask, who uh, who's the better Monopoly player? <laughs> that's a great question. Me and Andrew have ever played Monopoly together. Um, I will say uh, the only competition that we've really done together. I'm um, actually looking at the trophy. We were in a in a the a Metro by T-Mobile media jam shootout over All Star Weekend because it was in Chicago. Yeah. 
somehow we got invited as members of the media to go do it. It was Ryan Russillo's thing, um, which was pretty cool. And uh, we won. So oh, nice. Andrew won the shooting contest. And then I won the overall contest, which ended up being like a knockout contest. So we got to take home the trophy and stuff. So um, we're very competitive guys. And I'm oh, sure Monopoly would get pretty crazy. So before we get to your prediction, I got to ask about your playing days. Uh, you've obviously been to the Cole Center. Uh, what, what's the atmosphere like in Madison versus versus other places uh, as a as a college basketball player, Joey? Yeah, you know, I really truly love the Cole Center. Really do. I grew up in Chicago, so only a couple hours away. Right. Had been to games before um, getting to college, but obviously being a player is a unique experience. Um, my last trip was one of my favorite road games ever um, when we actually, and, and with, if you're a Wisconsin fan listening, you can uh, put the earmuffs on, um, when we gave gave the Badgers uh, their worst home loss ever. So um, that was one of, selfishly, I'm sorry, one of my favorite moments in my career. Um, I ended up scoring in that game as well, so that's how you know that our rim might have been just a little bit bigger um, during that game. So uh, I really, I've, I've been on both ends of it. I've, I've Three games there, one where we got blown out, one where it was a close game, and one where we blew blew uh, Wisconsin out. So um, I've seen every kind of atmosphere. We've been there over winter break when there's not a ton of students. Like we've been there in the, you know, in the hypest part of the season when there's a bunch. So yeah, I got I can't say enough good things about Cole Center. So let's do it, Joey. Uh, it's prediction time. Obviously, you said on paper the depth. It looks like the Golden Eagles, but you can never count out sideline cancer. I also want an ending score out of your prediction as well. All right. Uh, I'll even one-up you because uh, when we recorded last night, I not only gave the winner the score, I gave how the Elam ending ended with the Love players. Love that. Final and stuff. So, Lay it on me. Um, yeah, so so buckle up. I've, uh, I've, <laughs> I've given this a lot of thought. So I got three words for you. Team of destiny. So, that being said, my prediction will be in an incredibly hard fought game where the Golden Eagles are up by double digits at some point. Sideline Cancer will end up uh, taking the victory in a million dollars, and uh, here's how they'll do it. It'll be 80-80. Uh, 80 to 80. Um, The target score that you'll end in is uh, 83. Okay. Um, Sideline Cancer gets the one stop they need. Um, they got four guys out on the perimeter who can all make a three, but you know who's got the ball in his hand. Uh, Marcus Elam, as Seth Greenberg likes to call him, Marcus Keene has the ball in his hand, gets a high ball screen from Eric Thompson. Um, as Eric Thompson rolls down the middle, um, for some reason, the Golden Eagles decide to tag him with a defender, which is a big mistake considering they need a thing. The only thing that beats them is a three. And Marcus Keene jumps up because he's a little guy to get the advantage to be able to make an overhead pass to the left wing for Remy Abel where he catches it and makes a contested three that bounces around and drops. Um, and then there's a Chicago, there's a there's a college World Series style mosh pit that happens, <laughs> dog pile, um, as they celebrate winning a million dollars and donating a hundred thousand dollars to uh, to cancer. And it's gonna be reminiscent of the Kawhi Leonard shot against Philly last year. Is that what you're telling me? It's gonna bounce a few times? I don't, you know you know what? I don't think that's replicable. But it might be similar. I'm thinking more of front rim, back forward, and it. Maybe. Okay. You know, like gives you gives you enough time to think that it might not go in. But by the time you think, oh my god, is this going in? It ends up dropping. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. That's awesome, Joey. Really appreciate the time, man. Awesome stuff from you. You you continue to put out awesome stuff at Inside TBT on Twitter for all the content coming from Joey and Andrew. And Joey, really appreciate the time, my man. Enjoy the game tonight. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. This was a blast. And uh, yeah, you enjoyed the game tonight too. I think we're, we're in for an instant classic. I really, really hope so. I'm going to drink a few beers and, and probably eat some potato chips and, and watch it go down. It's, uh, hey, sounds pretty good. I'll be joining you. Awesome. All right. That's Joey Lane, the co-host of the Inside TBT podcast, uh, as well as an Ohio State basketball alum joining us here on the Alex Strove Show. Man, oh man, was that an in-depth prediction for tonight, while I don't love his prediction, I love the the the, uh, the complexity of it. I mean, I've never heard a prediction to the end of any game quite that elaborate. So uh, appreciate the insight and the time from Joey Lane at Joey Smoke fourteen on Twitter.